मार किधर
That was a pretty fabulous experience, and this is entertainment redefined, and we only have Audible, the world's leading seller and producer in spoken word entertainment, to thank. What you've just heard is an excerpt from Mafia Queens of Mumbai, which is now available on Audible. Audible was created in 1995 by a visionary who understood way back then the power of the spoken word and the power of the digital medium. Please join me in welcoming on stage Donald Katz, founder and CEO, Audible. Well, hello everyone, and thank you for coming. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. So for years I was asked uh, why so many millions of people around the world are listening to Audible as they are right now, millions of people. And I would simply say, who wouldn't want Colin Firth or Kate Winslet or Nicole Kidman or Scarlett Johansson to tell them a story while they're driving to work or exercising or doing things around the house? And now I can say, who wouldn't want Radhika or Kalki or Raj to, uh, to tell them a story, particularly during a time of the day when their eyes are busy, but their ears and their minds are free to experience the music and language and the power of well-composed words that are artfully performed by great actors, as you just heard. A recent study of the neuronal responses in the brain that was done actually at the University of London, Kalki's alma mater and, and mine, although a few years earlier than her. Uh, I, um, the, the University of London study showed that the seductive intimacy of listening to Audible and the emotive power of listening, it actually exceeds the, uh, the, the power of film on a neurological level. And actually, we, were, we weren't surprised. So today, we formally bring Audible service to India. And I say formally because we've had so many tens of thousands of Indian listeners for years who are paying up to $15 US to listen, and now they can pay the equivalent of less than $3 here in India. So for me, this is a day that's been a, a long time coming and, uh, and really a dream come true. And in, in the spirit of a dream coming true, it was back in 1994, I was still an author and a journalist um, for more than 20 years, and I was also someone who loved and actually studied the, the sound of words. Uh, it was then that I began to tell people, I was writing a, a, a technology column at the time, that people, this is 1994, mind you, the people would be walking around with little solid state devices in their pockets, which would be packed with the best of civilization's offering. 
and to say that people thought I was pretty crazy at the time would be an understatement. It was a long time ago. But anyways, I, I left the writing life, and now it's been 21 years since Audible invented and commercialized the first digital audio player and the first audio delivery service. And this was five years before the iconic iPod came out from Apple. We've continued as a company to invent technology as we worked hard to push the spoken word into the media mainstream alongside film and television and music and books. I have read that uh, Indians actually spend more time reading than any other population, but I also know Mumbai traffic is a really, makes it pretty hard to read in a car. Um, people who listen to Audible all over the world now, they get to work smarter than their colleagues in the next cubicle. They tell us they're more enlightened because of the quality of the the wellness programming and the spiritual programming that we carry. They say they're more interesting at the dinner table and even on dates. And they tell us that their children have become more fluent learners because of Audible. And they say they're less lonely and they're actually happier too. So one thing we always do when we introduce our new service in a new country, and this is our ninth uh, lo localized service, and we have programming in, in more than 40 languages, is to study and engage the cultural traditions of storytelling the literature, and the performing arts in any country, and to combine this with our cutting-edge delivery mechanisms. Thus, you will find at Audible, as when it opens later today, uh, the great Tagore's work, Amish's myths, Ruskin Bond's autobiography, as well as his stories, and you'll find Salman Rushdie's 1981 novel, Midnight's Children, I actually got to introduce Salman at an event in New York the other night. Um, their titles are among more than 200,000 Audible books and other original programs that will be available here in India at launch. Um, over the last five years, we've worked and directly employed 20,000 different actors at Audible um, because Audible really exists to connect the best writers and the best actors, the best editors, the best directors, the best producers to the best listeners in the world. And we work daily to support the professional creative class and we'll do, do that in, here in India and anywhere else that we launch. Thank you everyone for coming, and now back to Anna Palmer. John, thank you so much. Thank you. Please join us on the panel. So I'm super excited to be sitting here with all of you. Uh, I want to spend the next few minutes talking about, of course, your experience with making this, this audio book, and, and on your plans for what is going to happen now uh, in India with Audible. Uh, Kalki, let's start with you. Uh, tell me what was challenging and what was exciting that brought you on to this project? Um, uh, am I Audible? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, a, I think I had already read Mafia Queens of Mumbai a few years back. Uh, 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 the, this, the forward had been written by Vishal Bhardwaj and I, you know, it caught my eye and I really liked the book, so that was exciting. Um, B, I think that uh, as an actor, it's, it's wonderful to use your voice and play with the nuances and, and uh, you know, I think audio really allows for that, uh, to really play on the different voices and, and uh, telling a story. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough, no, A and B. <laughs> <laughs> Radhika, what about you? Uh, no, I agree with Kalki, uh, but I also feel that uh, as a child, I was brought up with uh, a lot of storytelling. I think storytelling is a part of our culture, a very big part of our culture. And I remember uh, listening to those cassettes of Pula Deshpande uh, reading his own books. And there's this another tape I remember called Chan Chan Goshti. In Marathi, it, called, it means good, good tales. <laughs> and so he was always there and I think I lost that for a long time and then I uh, got to know about Audible and I uh, read, uh, I, I heard a book on Audible very recently when actually uh, they got in touch. So I thought it was just the perfect thing to do and I hadn't explored uh, expressing th through voice only because you know, on a video or stage, whatever, if you have so many other things to enhance or support what you're trying to um, uh, communicate, but here you just have your voice. And so how you want to pitch it and what is the tonal quality or how you want to direct the imagination of uh, the listener. And also it's personal because everyone's going to listen to it individually. So it's like a 
personal uh, relationship, I think, when it, it feels like that. And also in your studio, when you're silently doing that, it feels like a very personal thing. So I thought I, I, I thought I'll enjoy it, and I did. <laughs> we know that the three of you are amazing actors, right? But here, when you have only your voice, what techniques do you use to um, bring alive a book like this? You know, what did you do, Raj? Was it was it intimidating at all? I thought it would be pretty smooth, but it wasn't actually. Uh, you went in thinking, a, ah, asan hoga. Uh, I thought it, I just had to go and narrate a story and read out a story. But I think it, it, it was a bit challenging as well because you have to, of course, narrate a story and also keep it engaging and uh, entertaining for the uh, listeners and also to moderate voice. Like my, in one of my stories, which is uh, Sapna Didi, uh, I'm playing Sapna Didi as well. Like otherwise, I could have never played Sapna Didi for films. I think that's the fun of, uh, you know, Audible, uh, being part of Audible that you could play as actors. You got to play so many characters in just one story. And also just the idea, uh, I was really excited that I had to do a solo performance where I could only use my voice and modulate everything through my voice. Also, like, I just thought it would be great to explore this idea. But I think all of us, we had a lot of fun, you know, recording all these amazing stories. How do you know when it's not going well? How uh, do we know? Uh, yeah, when it's had, just voice, uh, you know, how can you tell? Uh, no, we had we had amazing amazing people who were guiding us, uh, and uh, uh, also you could hear it. You could hear it. You could uh, hear it. You, 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 you could listen to your takes and then figure out if it's working or not. If it's, uh, it's it has that kind of impact or not that you wanted to create. And also, when you get like a pronunciation wrong like eight times, <laughs> like you know, Ma Lakshmi Papa Mani. It takes you a while. Now I can say it really well, Ma Lakshmi Papa Mani. But in the beginning, I was saying Papa Mani and all sorts of things. So, yeah. Don, Audible has, of course, collaborated with some of the greatest actors in the world. What is your impression of what our actors have done? I just, it's been fantastic to talk to them today about, you know, what they saw that they did see that is a, there's a complexity to it. I told them what many actors tell us, that um, it's like long distance running as opposed to movies which are more like sprinting because the intensity of the this, this short shots, the, the intensity of the close-ups. But one of the things is that some of the actors we, we hired, were, we, they loved the control it gave them without over, you know, too much direction. And then I have to say a lot of them also love the fact that uh, I, I learned this when I found Susan Sarandon in our studios in the, in the East, and she was apparently wearing pajamas. And she came on bus and said to me, no hair and makeup, it's such a gift <laughs> to, 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 to be able to just do it, do it in a casual way. And, uh, and the reality is, too, that um, you can fit this in. You know, the commitment levels to stars like, like these is, is, is a very intense schedule. You can fit this in in a couple of days and have another creative platform. But that's, I think, what we'll find, which we've found, is the actors now are coming to us in droves. It's, uh, you know, never when that when Annette Benning basically kind of attacked me at a at an event saying, Everyone in Hollywood's working for you but me, what's wrong with me? And I said, Well, you can actually do it too. So she was in the studio the next next week. And I think when it gets going in India, it's such a particular art form and a particular kind of storytelling tradition that um, many the most creative people in any culture will come to it. But that's what happens with technology when new things happen. The invention of television, the invention of radio. They often call them golden ages, and, and we're experiencing this globally now. Did you guys enjoy that? No hair and makeup? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I think one day I came in after a jog, like fully sweaty and everything, and went straight in, which was great. <laughs> yeah, actually, once I, I went cycling, yeah, my driver was not there and the car was not there, and I thought, let me just cycle. Yeah. <laughs> so, was there an excerpt or one story from Mafia Queens that really appealed to you, for any of you? Um, yes. Uh, is this working? Yeah, now it's working. Uh, there's Gangubai story that really appealed to me. That's one of the stories I read. Mostly because I think that time in Mumbai, I mean, it's my home now, and I, I'm not really aware of how it would have been. And I think all the mafia stories that I've seen so far are predominantly about men. And women just sort of have the secondary position. But this, these stories are about women. And Gangubai especially, I think she was a victim of, you name it. I mean, betrayed, tried, like made into a prostitute, like here she had to do, da da da. And she just did not victimize herself. And she stood shoulder to shoulder with all the dons and made her voice heard to literally the people governing the country. 
And it's such an inspiring story. And a very compassionate woman. So um, it was fascinating reading her story, I think. For you, Kal? Um, I like some of the shorter humorous stories. There's uh, this character, uh, this person, Shota Shakil, who was in Dubai. And he had a, a lover girlfriend called Rubina in Bombay. So they would have these email interactions where you know, uh, they're talking about business and have you gone and picked up this thing from that person? And, uh, and in between it was like, Mary John, <laughs> da, 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 da. And so there's this like weird interaction uh, that these women, he was having several affairs actually. Uh, and each of his affairs he was seeing Mary John too. And it, it, it's quite funny, those stories are quite funny. Radhika, how has the Audible experience been for you? Like, what, what do you think of the diversity that the app offers? I think uh, it's, 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 I mean, outside, it's just launching here. But I mean, I think otherwise, you take any genre, you take any kind of information you want to uh, listen, like, uh, uh, know, or you want to have any subject. And also, the people who are reading it are, are incredible performers or writers reading their own material as well. So it's 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 completely very very diverse. And uh, now that I've had a taste of it, uh, and I'm I'm sure there's a long way to go, <laughs> and you know a lot of practice needed. But I think now I'll listen to it with a different perspective uh, and see what works for me, what doesn't work, and how effective. Why is it effective? And um, I know that they are launching a lot of Hindi um, uh, books as well. I'm really looking forward to that because I, I studied in Marathi and then I studied in English. So I have read, read Marathi books and I've read English books, but Hindi I understand perfectly well, but I don't read it very fast. And now I can actually, uh, I have a very convenient way <laughs> of uh, read, knowing the literature and certain books that I've been wanting to know. Did you three, sort of learn anything during this experience that now you'll take back to your craft as you do other things, movies, plays, everything else? Subtlety. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apart from a lot of correct uh, pronunciations, uh, I think yeah, what you said, subtlety is something that you can, you don't have to be really expressive. If you just feel it, it, it comes in your voice. I think it was, it was mostly about acting for us also. Uh, probably a little technical uh, that you have to keep it, you have to pronounce it right in a right, o in a right way and you have to have that throw. Uh, but apart from that, it was just like acting, just how you, how you do it for feature films. Uh, you just have to feel it and then do it in a way. So I think subtlety is, is something which I really, uh, I think I would take back from this experience. Um, I think uh, I personally feel this and I'm, it's not a general, general statement, statement, but speech has not given its Im due importance sometimes in, in, in films recently, where it also becomes very candid, everything has to be very subtle, I mean, not that subtle, but, you know, like underplayed and candid, and so how important is breathing while you uh, speak, and how important is where you breathe, and the importance of uh, the weight of the words is not as uh, as uh, well studied as it used to be, you know, because these actors used to really deliver their lines and that's not the case right now. But here it mattered so much where you took that breath and how much did you finish, what did you do, how, whether you went down or when you went up. And it was very good for me to understand that again and say, oh, I don't pay so much attention when I'm performing. Uh, so that was another thing I think I, I'll take back. Yeah, what I love is, is that it teaches you to listen. Yeah, you know, there is an art to listening, just the way there's obviously an art to, to acting. And um, I, I usually just beg people, give it an hour or two, because you, you, you won't get it from the samples. It's not like a, a cursory format, like a music service, which is most of them are giant sampling services. If you immerse and let yourself be taken away by either a story or something that's teaching you something new, it, it's, it's, it's weirdly addictive. We just know that from the numbers. The average customer around the world gives us two hours um, of, of listening when, every day that they start listening. Um, and it, gets, it does get really deep. We'll have um, debates in the communities about of there's nine versions of some classic about which interpretation is better. Certain customers will only buy certain um, actors because some actors just do this full time. And um, they usually come from 
from theater or movies, and they just find their voice in this particular way. So it gets, it gets really kind of deep, and it really is, it's a media type. It just wasn't really as appreciated as you're saying about the voice per se. And the, the, the way they act involves nuance and subtleties and prosody. And you know they probably don't even think of it that way, but when they get into it, they're, they're offering subtle interpretive performances. So in many ways, when we started, when we do audiobooks, all we're doing is positioning a book as a great script for an interpretive performance. So, um, and then original scripts, and there's hundreds of original scripts being written all over the world right now by comedians and playwrights and, uh, and journalists and all different kinds of writers. So it's, uh, it, I can't wait to see what happens here because the cultural explosion in India is, is so deep. I mean, the fact that there's, you know, people here have done theater and multiple languages are very aware, you know, Tamil and Nerthi, and you know, it's, it's uh, I, I think between the indie environment, the theater environment, and the, the Bollywood environment, now binge television's coming here, and uh, I see, you know, occasionally talk about the end of appointment cinema, all this technology stuff, it's, it, it makes for cultural mixtures that will create creativity that we've never thought of, and that's what's exciting about the platform of Audible. It's, it's like an inspiration platform. Do you guys see a time when we'd have audible stars? <laughs> you know, people, like you said, people buying only one person's book. Yeah, sure. I think why not? I don't see any other reason that it, it can't happen here. You were just mentioning how, you know, also it's, it's generating so much of employment. Like, like 20,000 actors working for Audible in US, it's, it's huge. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I think if it can generate employment, and it, it, there's so many amazing actors we have in this country. And not probably not everybody's getting work in feature films or, or series, but now there's something they they can do and at least you know make that living. Yeah. So don't tell us about original programming here, uh, Audible originals. How are you going to be uh, you know collaborating with Indian talent? Basically, exactly the same way. So it's you know it, it's whoever has the best idea. It can be from this pr amazing production community here. The, there's people in the audience who who run production houses, there's producers and directors. Um, basically, anyone who has a vision of how to bring well-composed words and then having them artfully performed, we're kind of open for, for what it, whatever it is. It, in, this, in the States, it's amazing how comedians have stepped up to create original programming. I mean, for various reasons, comedians are now probably one of, some of the most trenchant observers of our discourse of politics, so, such as it is, and, uh, and I think that uh, um, but that's, this has always really happened. I mean, most American comedians got very famous because of their television roles. They talk about stand-up as their primary art form, but the truth is, you know, Jerry Seinfeld and Robin Williams became who they were by, by transferring their talent to new media types like the sitcom. And uh, so, we, we'll, we, you know, I'm sure that we'll be surprising our growing audience with, uh, with a lot of original programming written to the, to the aesthetic, this, this very intimate, kind of aesthetic, and I think it's interesting. We have a writer here who, who listened and figured out a way to make a book that is very particular to, uh, to how he interpreted the audible aesthetic versus the way he wrote normally. Well, speaking of which, let's bring him in. We have a creator in our midst, and I'm excited to bring another great storyteller on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for one of the most popular authors of this generation who's created his first ever audio romance. It's an audible original, Mr. Dojoy Datta. Congratulations on your Audible original, and thank you. Tell us, uh, when you're right, when you're writing specifically for Audible, how do you think you can increase romance using just voice? I think I think when you switch from uh, switch from just writing to say an audio book, it it heightens every emotion. It's not just romance; it heightens every emotion. So. Uh, when I was writing it, of course, it's a new medium, it's a new format, so it was a bit challenging, but as I went in a few chapters, it sort of felt like I was having a conversation with a listener. It was, it felt like I was confiding in my listener. It seemed like it was more like a love letter to my listener. So, so that, at that point in time, it became very interesting for me. And that is the, that is the, 
time that I got really sucked into writing it. And I, and I just think that, you know, generally when I, when I write the last few chapters, my job ends, but this time we recorded it and I, just, and I heard it. And when I heard it, I was like, this has a new dimension to it. You know, it's like my work has come to life. It's, 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 it's a little different from how I wrote and it's a different in a, in a good way. So I think that really changed it for me. I think, I think that was really interesting. Um, what can you tell us about this romance? What can you reveal? Okay, I can't, I can't give you... You can't tell us anything. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, <laughs> the title is uh, The Last Boy to Fall in Love. It's, it's a dystopian fiction. It's or a sci-fi romance or speculative fiction or whatever you might call it. Uh, it's different from anything else that I've ever done. For the last 10 years, I've been writing romance stories which are rooted in reality. This one has fantastical or fantasy elements to it. And that is where I think it sort of blends in with this, uh, with this format because when you're trying to sell a story which is not rooted in reality, you need other dimensions to make you believe in that story, to buy into the characters and to buy into their journey. And uh, it's been narrated by Sikandar Kher and Rasika Dukul and they have done a brilliant job. It was much better than the <laughs> way I wrote it. Uh, so I really like the way they have narrated it. and and and. I myself, because whenever I'm writing something like this, and I've attempted this a lot of times before, whenever I'm writing like this, I don't believe the story myself. But when I heard it back, I was like, yes, now you I... You believed it when they read it. Yeah, I, now I believe in this story. This, this world really exists. So, yeah. But tell me, Duja, what would you do differently because it's an Audible original? So the first thing, when I started writing the story, is I read a lot of Audible books, and I realized that the books that worked for me personally were the ones that were written in first person because that is when it's a direct one-to-one -one conversation because when you go into a third person story, it, it sort of becomes one too many. So that is the first thing that I did that I wanted it to be an intimate conversation because you are in someone's ear for the next four or five hours. So you have to be that much more intimate, you have to be that much more personal and you have to not self-indulge so much. You ha you're primary goal is to make that person not take out his earphone for the next four hours. So, yeah. Is the language different? Uh, the only difference that I, did, I, 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 I sort of did not try to uh, overextend scenes because I needed it to be a little snappier than usual. That's the only difference that I, I did not dump it down just because you know, you're hearing it. Right. I just made it a little more snappier. Well, it sounds very exciting and can't wait to listen to it. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to all of you, Radhika, Rajkumar, Kalki, Dojoy. Uh, from Team Audible, big thanks to all of you for creating what you have. And a personal thanks to you. Um, I have to share with all of you that I, you know, had, of course, heard of Audible, but I hadn't experienced it until very recently. And the one thing I really wanted in my life was more books. And it's just, I don't know why, but it just wasn't. As a working mother, it would never happen. And I've been on Audible for about three days now, and I'm halfway through a book. So thank you. <laughs> Big personal thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have some evening festivities planned for you. I request everyone to make their way outside and enjoy the rest of the evening. Make sure you try the nooks and explore the listening pods to get a first-hand experience of Audible. The rest of us have to stay here and do some photos. <laughs> Media folks, please stay back for the same. Thank you all.
कोई नहीं कर रहा बिल्कुल अरे मैं मराठी के लिए कर Thank you. 